So I'm standing here with Tilmiza Hussein, who's the Deputy Representative to the United Nations for the Maldives. Tilmiza, in December in Copenhagen, we spoke to the President of the Maldives, uh, President Nasheed, and he really emphasised that climate change is an urgent issue for your country. What kinds of impacts are we seeing in the Maldives uh, as a result of climate change? Um, climate change is indeed an urgent issue for Maldives. For us, it is uh, an issue of life and death, like President Nasheed has said many a times. We are already experiencing the slow onset effects of climate change. I think uh, in a lot of people's mind, when we talk about climate change, uh, you're thinking about sea level rise because we're talking about sea level rise and islands submerging and disappearing. And, but we all know that it doesn't happen overnight that all of a sudden when you wake up next, next morning, the uh, sea level would rise and all the islands would submerge. It doesn't happen that way. It is a slow um, onset of events that would lead to deaths of nations. and. Uh, the effects that we're seeing right now are uh, beach erosions uh, where more than 16 islands are affected and we are having to relocate people internally to other parts of the same island or to different islands so and it, it's a, a, a expensive and also it's disrupting people's uh, livelihood and uh, daily um, uh, ongoing activities in the life like children going to school, not being able to go to school and things like that. We are also having serious problem with uh, fresh water contamination. Um, a lot of islands, uh, the water lands has been contaminated and uh, there are only very few islands where we have desalinated uh, water available so we are having serious problems with the uh, water issues. Then our Fisheries industry is impacted, uh, which is the second largest industry in the country. And uh, there was a series of coral breaching events that took place uh, this year. And that is going to eventually impact our tourism industry. So we are feeling the uh, impacts of climate change right now. And it is an urgent issue. And we are having to take adaptation measures right now. We cannot wait to take the adaptation measures. Um, believe you me when I say this, for next year's government budget, our adaptation budget, what we have allocated for our adaptation budget is a lot more than what we have allocated for our education budget. So that speaks volume of what we are going through and uh, what uh, what kind of uh, urgency with which the international community needs to take action on climate change. Now you mentioned the importance of the international community taking action and, and that's why we're all here in, in Tianjin in China. How much progress do you think is being made at, at these UN climate talks? Uh, I think the session in Tianjin needs to go faster and a uh, lot more momentum needs to be picked up in order to in order to come to uh, come to be able to come to some uh, decisions in Cancun there is lack of clarity as to how we are going to achieve a set of decisions in Cancun how we are going to have a legal framework in place to be able to achieve a legally binding agreement in future there are talks about uh, that if we have a legal framework decision, then we cannot have a series of package decisions on elements that are in the text which are mature enough to conclude in Cancun. So there is this discussion going on back and forth about this, but there is no clarity on how we are going to get there and how we are going to achieve. So uh, going out of Tianjin, it would be very it would be very important before we leave Tianjin that we get clarity on how we are going to achieve this in Cancun so that we can have a decision on a legal framework that would lead to a legally binding agreement in future. Plus, we would have a series of uh, decisions on, I, on the elements that are mature in the text uh, that we could uh, come to an agreement in Cancun. You mentioned the importance of, of taking leadership and, and, and really um, pushing these talks forward, but what are the Maldives doing um, themselves in, in order to um, you know, mitigate the effects of climate change and, and to reduce your own emissions? 
Maldives have taken a lot of steps uh, in order to reduce uh, emissions and uh, go towards a carbon neutral economy, carbon, uh, carbon neutral country. But uh, we understand that what we do has a little uh, impact on the global emission reductions. But we believe that we could lead by example and what we start at home can set as an example for other countries to follow and uh, to pick up on. That being said, I'm also very pleased to inform you that uh, President Nasheed has installed solar panels in his uh, official residence just yesterday. And that would, uh, that would provide 50% of electricity for his house, and which amounts to about 15,000 kilowatts uh, per annum. So uh, it would save $350,000 over a period of 25 years, which is the lifespan of the panels. For us, it makes economic sense going towards renewable energy. In Maldives, there are islands where people pay a dollar, a dollar and a half, for a kilowatt of energy. I don't think there is, a, there is a country on this planet that would pay that much for electricity, except small island nations. For us, uh, the, 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 the biggest problem is that in e going renewable energy, the biggest problem I think small island states face is that the initial in upfront investment cost. If we can find a way to bridge that gap, then um, it would make a lot of, uh, it, it, it would make a lot, lot of economic sense for small island states to go renewable energy. It would save us a lot of money. Tilmita, thanks very much. For